Hello there everybody, Subaru Night 2 AK Nightmare, and welcome back to the House in Feta Morgana, Requiem for Innocence, in our third video of the week. I'm... As you can tell, I basically had a fair amount of free time this week, and I wanted to make the most of it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the, well, slew of extra long videos I've done, because I certainly have enjoyed it doing it this week. Anyway, last where we left off... Gratian basically betrayed us. But it kind of makes me wonder, was he always like that to begin with? I mean, was everything that he did, like all of his friendliness, just kind of a facade? I don't know. But let's just throw ourselves back into this without giving us a break. breathe. My blood feels like it's made of magma. My throat burns. My skin, it's like it's being eaten away. <sighs> Who's there? <laughs> Who's there? Why are you laughing? Answer me! Oh, yeah. oh, God, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> How does it feel, boy? To know it all went exactly as I said it would. How? But you That you wouldn't be able to trust anyone. You're... You're dead. The worst is yet to come, boy. Silence! You could work yourself to the matter of your bones, and still the people will never look beyond the surface. I said enough! Listen. You can hear the scorn in their voices. <clears throat> They're calling you a tyrant. A soulless monster. I know you can hear them. They are not. They say you're no better than me. That you're a foolish ruler who cares not for his people. They shout an endless cacophony of discontent. Shut up. Just shut up. I am nothing like you. Can you then remain a virtuous leader, no matter how bitterly your people despise you? Is your love for them truly so resolute? No. The virtue you brandish was never so selfless. <clears throat> Tell me I'm wrong, slum rat. It is not benevolence that drove you to take the throne, but a thirst for power, for prestige. Not another word. Do you know what truly brought you here? You were tired of people looking down on you. You thought you would be treated with respect if you had real power. You wanted it more than anything in the world. Enough already. You dedicated your life in the service of others. It was never going to last. Allow me to make a prediction. Soon, very soon, You'll find yourself drifting over to my side. You'll stop caring about the people's lives, and for that, they will despise you. You'll lose any last bit of sense left in you. Push everyone away until you're all alone, and then you'll succumb completely to madness's grip. Stop talking. You don't have what it takes to be the lord of the land. I said stop talking! God. Oh God. The people aren't the only ones who aren't on your side. You have enemies everywhere you look. <laughs> the nobles don't accept you as one of them. They'll try to drag you off your throne by any means. <laughs> your aides and servants will turn on you. <laughs> 
And this won't be the last time you writhe in the claws of poison. Again and again and again and again. Never will you stop being the target of others' loathing. Or will you continue to act like some kind of paragon of virtue, never wavering in your faith in others? How long will your benevolence last? In the face of dozens of attempts on your life! Shit. Oh God! And Mal! It won't be easy, boy. Because you came from the slums, you'll face even more, even greater threats than I! Ireland! I bet that just terrifies you. Drains all the hope from your heart. Well, there's an easy solution. Follow my footsteps and reign with terror. Stop talking! I've heard enough of your goddamn noise. <laughs> You're already afflicted with a great curse, boy. A curse known as the Lord of the Land. It's a curse from which you will never be free. And hence, you will never be free from me. <laughs> However much you may come to regret taking that throne, you can't give it back now. It's not something you can simply hand off to someone else. Nor a duty from which you can simply relieve yourself. That anguish and agony and misery it brings you every day will follow you all the way to your grave. Just stop, damn it. Keep your babbling to yourself, you damned ghost. Go on. Try and make me. Cover my mouth, why don't you? You can't do it, can you? You're too weak to defeat even a mere spirit. Shut the hell up! I know precisely what your future holds, boy. You'll sit upon the throne alone, not a single person at your side. And not even death shall free you from your eternal solitude. For it is not but an empty shell with which you decorate the throne. Stop! Talking! <coughs> Do you hear that slum rat? Someone's come for you. The question is, do they act out of genuine concern? Can you be sure the water they give you is safe to drink? Perhaps they mean to finish you off. <coughs> If a simple grunt like him could get his hands on poison, how easy do you think it will be for the Lord's Council to procure a substance hundreds of times more potent? <coughs> Hell, you wouldn't even have to go through the trouble. You're no more a threat than an insect with its wings torn off. A feeble woman or a crippled slave could plunge a knife into your trembling spine with little effort. Behold, the former mastermind of the revolution. All this suffering, you brought it on yourself by trying to defy your fate. <laughs> yeah, I can't even attempt that with this voice. I mean, it's not like uh, the past few recordings destroyed my throat or anything. <sighs> The nightmares continued. Again, again, and again, and again they haunted me. Every time I drifted off to sleep, there floated Barnier's severed head, cursing me, mocking me, laughing at me from every direction. And as he said I would, I would soon begin to hear the people as well, endlessly condemning me, deriding me, berating me. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head, but Gratian's words told me otherwise. All my old companions called me Jacopo the Betrayer, he had said. I wasn't sure how much time had passed. 
Was it day? Was it night? Was I sane enough to tell the difference? Was I even still alive? I had no idea. It was always the same refrain every time he appeared. You can't trust anyone. Your friends will eventually betray you to try to drag you off your throne. Your people have no faith in you. Everyone despises you. I couldn't even tell anymore. Were those Barnier's words? Or were they coming from the depths of my own mind? All I knew for certain was that there was no escaping them. And they were slowly eating away at my spirit. What's the name of this theme so I can listen to it whenever I'm feeling very fucked up in the head? My breathing was labored, and my entire body felt like it was on a spit being roasted in the eternal flames of hell. And at other times, I couldn't stop shivering. I felt like I had been tossed into a frozen river. Doctors, guards, Odalon, I, I couldn't tell who was who, but there always seemed to be someone standing at my side. The faceless shadows were anything but comforting, though, for Barnier's ghost constantly reminded of me of the, throat, of the threat they opposed. I quite certainly wailed like a terrified child. Everyone seemed like a danger. If even Gratian couldn't be trusted, who was to say the doctors weren't sneaking poison into my medicine? Who was to say Odalon didn't plan to silently remove me? I didn't know who I could trust. Or maybe... Barnier was right. I couldn't trust anyone. Still he cackled. Still he cursed right by my ear. There isn't a soul left in this world who won't betray you. He whispered, laughing away. Fuck off, Barnier! My fever seems to be receding. I can finally move again. It looks like I survived. Hey. Hey. Is anyone there? Where are you, Odalon? Anyone? Lord Barnier! I'm so glad to see you're feeling well again! Thanks. We've all been worried sick. Lord Barnier? What? Oh, pardon. You just seem, um, not quite yourself. B -b -b but after all that's happened, I suppose that shouldn't be a surprise. How long was I out? Three days, sir. The poison kept you bedridden for full three full days and nights. That long, huh? Then I've got a lot of work to catch up on. Yes, sir, but, but I implore you to take things easy for these next few days. When do I ever have time for that? Now, where's Odalon? I haven't seen him. Go fetch him for me. I... Um... He is presently... Don't tell me he's not around. Where the hell did that old man get off to? No, he is here. Please, Lord Barnier, try to remain calm. Odalon was... Eldalon! Oh my god, no. My lord, is that you? Thank heavens, you are well. Forget about me, what happened? My deepest apologies. I don't want an apology. I want you to tell me why this happened. Please, my lord, distress not over this simple old man. <laughs> Why, Odalon? Uh, the Odalon I know would never deign to put himself out in front of a gang of slum dwellers. What? Please, Lord Barnier, to try to remain calm. Odalon was struck in the head with a stone and is in critical condition. The following day, that is. The day after Gratian poisoned me, a dozen of people from the slums showed up at the manor gates. They cried in angry protest against the law, demanding change. Evidently, Gratian hadn't kept word of my deception to himself, so in addition to their other complaints, they shouted that I was a fake, that I wasn't actually nobility. 
They threatened to reveal my secret if I didn't do something about their living conditions. As the commotion dragged on through the day, people within the manor started getting restless. Eventually, it got to be so tense that Eudelon stood near a window. I told them they needed to cease immediately, and that if they, if they wouldn't, they would be charged with Le Majestiste. Which is when he was hit in the head with a rock and lost consciousness. God, you damn fool! I am quite pleased to see you have recovered. Enough to shout with such vigor. Now I needn't worry. Oh, wait. Slow down. Uh, worry about what? Regrettably, it would seem old age has bested me. I think the stone must have gotten my eyes. For I cannot see you there, my lord. I'm right here. Please don't give up on me. You're stronger than a stupid rock. Give it a, give it a few days and you'll be back to perfect health. And, and even if your sight doesn't come back, you can still do your job. I, I can tell you everything I see. Come on, Odalon. My sincerest apologies. Please. Why would you even go try and talk them down yourself anyway? Whatever happened to acting only in your own benefit? What did you have to gain from not having them executed on the spot? They were rioting in front of the Lord's Manor. You had no reason to bother warning them. There was no question they were committing a serious offense. Why didn't you just do what you would always do? And then, and then I would argue with you about it, like I always do. What the hell got into you, Odalon? I suppose I must have softened up somewhat. Excuse me? You cared so much about your friends in the slums, my lord, that I... I took pity on them. Old age seems to weaken more than just the body. Now truly inconvenient. Odalon. Nevertheless, I am glad this old body held out until today. What are you? I would not have been able to pass on peacefully had I not seen you recovered from the poison, my lord. Stop it. Don't talk like that. I told you, you're stronger than one damn rock. I'm your lord, damn it! My word is the law! It is with great regret. But I must defy my lord's command. <laughs> Enough. I mean it. You stop this right now. <laughs> my warnings against being swayed by your emotions remain unheeded. I see. Then who the hell's fault do you think that is, huh? You are the lord. The sooner you learn to control that blaze, the smoother your future endeavors will proceed. Do not allow your days to be cut short as well in a moment's weakness. <laughs> I implore you to always remain strong, strong and ever high of heart, so that none may drag you down. With the death of Henri, my hands are shaking dreadfully. I didn't think anything scared you. It terrifies me to know I'll be leaving you alone. Before, I was able to teach you everything. I cannot bear knowing that I have forsaken you at but the onset of a great and perilous journey. There is so much more I have yet to pass on to you that you will need in order to become a great ruler. So much. Then don't go. Stay and teach me. You said you wanted to fulfill your duties as a council. 
that you didn't want to die until you had accomplished something worthwhile. You can't tell me you're satisfied with this. Eudelon. Eudelon? Eudelon. Don't do this. You can't. Say something. Please say anything. Tell me it's all a cruel prank. Odalon! Oh my god. Oh my god. Lord Barnier? Eudelon is dead. Make arrangements for a funeral. Yes, Lord. And what happened with the riot? They fled soon after striking Eudelon. I would wager they returned to the city. Thank you. Would you like something done about them, Lord? I would. They need to understand that their actions have consequences. They slandered their lord and murdered his council. We can't just let them walk away from that, now can we? Then we will have them all arrested and, and thrown in the dungeon. I said there would be consequences. If we just slap them on the wrists, they will come back and do it again. They'll mock me, condescend me, ridicule me, keep making a mess of my home. Tell me, do you feel safe serving a lord whose people neither respect nor fear him? Would you have any admiration for a leader like that? Have them executed. Since Odalon isn't here to advise it, I, Lord Barnier, officially order. Every spark of opposition is to be snuffed out. You find every last one of the rats and relieve them of their heads. And then put them on display in the city square. Make sure they know damn well exactly what awaits anyone who opposes Lord Barnier. Yes, Lord. Odalon's blood was on my hands. My inexperience and naivety had gotten him killed. He had warned me again and again that my people who had no love for me. But I ignored him, foolishly believing in friendship, letting Gratian into my house and ultimately getting Odalon murdered. My trust didn't belong with Gratian or my old slum companions. It belonged with Odalon. I should have realized so much sooner that he was the one and only person left I could trust. Oh my god. And that speech about, oh my... In a way, he was literally like a father to you. Men with whom I had spent years had likely participated in that riot. Men whose names I knew, whose faces I recognized, with whom I had spoken on countless occasions but I felt not even a pang of regret in ordering their deaths. I didn't reminisce about the good old days. Those days were gone, irrelevant, meaningless. I felt no sympathy for the people they were leaving behind, nor did I so much as bat an eye when I saw their bodies lined up before me. Compassion bred weakness, made you vulnerable. I had to excise every last bit of it. It was the last thing I needed, for I was the Lord Jean-Francais Barnier, Oh, I don't think Maria's gonna like that. Hey, look at all those heads. Supposedly they were beheaded for trying to assassinate the Lord. That seems like a lot of folks for an assassina assassination attempt. Who can say what happened up yonder? Have you been down to the square today? I have, my heavens! I almost passed out at the sight of it! 
Why would those stupid thugs try to go after the Lord anyway? There's been whisperings around town. They say he was actually born in the slums and isn't a noble at all. Wasn't that just his cover while he was hiding in from the phony Barnier? I certainly hope that's the case. But either way, it's probably best to keep quiet about the topic. I'll say, I doubt he'll do anything as bad as the phony, but it still brings back bad memories. And things were getting to be so pleasant too. What is this? Some kind of sick joke? Fuck it. Gratian's right at the very front. And the other guys he used to hang out with at the pub. Did you... Did you kill them all, Jacopo? You... Killed all your old friends? Why? What the hell, Jacopo? You would never hurt anyone. What happened to you? You weren't through hell. You went through hell with these guys. How could you just fucking murder them? <laughs> have you really changed that much? You have. You have, Jacopo. You've become a completely different man. Hmm. No. You're long dead. You died in that goddamn revolution. Jacopo I know no longer exists. All that's left is Lord Barnier. Everyone. They're all gone. You, Morgana, Chirin, Gratian. Ever last one. What the fuck, man? I appointed a new council shortly after Odalon's death, but he was an inf in ineffectual, short-sighted oaf. And to top it off, he had a tendency to simply nod and agree with anyone and everyone rather than express any opinions of his own. If anything, having him around made my job more difficult. But it wasn't as though there was anyone else competent enough to take the position, and relieving him so soon would come, off, come with its own crop of problems. Yeah, so I ended up using him to shuffle papers and handle other menial work while I took care of the actual decision-making. My first order of business was to establish clearly defined rules and punishments. Speaking ill of the Lord, spreading false rumors about his lineage, creating art of any form which could be interpreted as defamatory. These are all considered acts of le magie. I, I'm sorry, I am really sorry if I am mispronouncing that. I never took French. I think that's French. Les, le majesse. Le majesté. I'm guessing that's an act of... I, Treasonous, I'm guessing? Is that what it means? I don't know. In the mo and in the most severe cases, were potentially punishable by death. I started seeing results almost immediately. The people stopped claiming I was a fake, that I came from the slums. The Banya name became a symbol of fear once again. My renovation efforts proceeded as originally planned. The city flourished as a commerce hub, attracting merchants and patrons and visitors from near and far. Some fields had to be removed as well to accommodate the expansion of the marketplace, but they were hardly producing anything worthwhile to begin with. If farmers wanted to keep farming, they were free to move elsewhere. I scaled down the size of the slums while scaling up security. Lacking leadership, what little remained of the Peacekeeper group had turned into a gang of unruly thugs. So rather than keeping the peace, they largely made things worse. In response, I forbade the formation of unauthorized organizations within the slums. And with all that in place, the city was much safer and more orderly, and the economy significantly stronger than it had been under my predecessor's rule. However, those unfortunate enough to miss riding the wave of economic growth found themselves falling ever further behind their neighbors. The ravine between the, ri the poor and the wealthy had become nigh uncrossable. My own manor was hardly a bastion of safety either. Not only was I rapidly enacting new policy, laws were stricter and punishments harsher than before, so many were, and to put it lightly, more than a little displeased with me. I'd gone through several food tasters and just as many direct assassination attempts. It wasn't particularly difficult to avoid major incidents by simply suspecting everyone, but I could seldom relax as a result. In time, I came to prefer solitude. Well, not so much prefer, as require it for my own safety. Damn, though. Odalon's death left me with more than just solitude, though. 
The phantom slipped free from my dreams, appearing from my shadow whenever I was alone, laughing endlessly. What did I tell you, boy? You're controlling them with fear, just as I did. It's a wonderful feeling, is it not? The look of terror on a man's face is the most exquisite thing in all the world. Silence you. Stand by the window and listen. You can hear them all the way from the bottom of the hill. Bemoaning the great and terrible Lord Barnier. Be quiet. And you know who their cries are about. It's not me any longer. It's you, boy. What? Oh, God damn it. Don't fool yourself. You're no better than me. Enough! I said silent spirit. I am nothing like you. Is that so? Then tell me, boy, how do we differ? I don't hold those disgusting banquets for one. Nor do I torture slaves for my own sick pleasure. By your command, hundreds of slaves are being worked so hard it will surely spell their deaths. How is that any different from than murder or torture? Their deaths aren't meaningless. They're giving their lives for the good of this city. In your eyes, perhaps. But how many would take your side? You have no idea what you're talking about. If the people were truly satisfied with your rule, you wouldn't be held up in this room all the time. <laughs> You have no one you can open up to, no one to offer you companionship. What better proof of your tyrannical ways than your own isolation? Shut your damn mouth! You wretched man. How many times have you been betrayed? Have you found anyone you can trust after all your old friends proved you couldn't even count on them? Oh, for God's sake, quit babbling already! Solitude will be your constant companion for the rest of your days. And, should you let your guard down, even for a moment, know that a hundred men lie in wait, ready to plunge their blades into your back. Your attendants dream of the day they can sneak poison past your tasters. Shut up! Ah, you poor pathetic child. How much misery and stress have you brought upon yourself because you let your dreams run amok? Clawing your way into a world much, much too big for you. Be gone, damn you! <laughs> My lord, I heard a huge crash. <clears throat> lord? How many times do I have to tell you to stay out of my chambers? Forgive me, but I was afraid you might be in. I couldn't take care of myself, damn it. Don't make me say it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> to hell with you. We're nothing alike. I'm making their lives better, not worse. I am not a tyrant. I started relying on alcohol to rid myself of the phantom. When I was a drunk enough, I didn't have to see anything. I didn't dream, I didn't have nightmares, and most importantly, I didn't have to think. There were times I couldn't be sure whether I was in my right mind. There were times I was so panicked I wanted to scream my throat raw. I'm kind of doing that with Barnier's voice, though, honestly. But there was never a time I was safe showing that weakness. I knew from experience it would only put me at risk. I couldn't complain to anyone. I couldn't ask anyone for help. I couldn't believe in anyone. Odalon's dying words came back to me again and again. Stay strong and ever high of heart. What did it even mean to be high of heart? Though, suddenly I had nothing to be proud of. Not having spent my early years a filthy, impoverished slum rat. No having spearhead, not having spearheaded a re violent revolution and stolen the throne. Not this farce of a tale about me secretly being a noble. I hadn't been raised to be a lord. I hadn't been taught to have a proud noble spirit. 
that was likely what Odalon had wanted to impart upon me. The nature of a ruler. People automatically respect a man who is truly dignified and noble. They instinctively admire him, kneeling out of wholehearted honor. And that's what makes a true king. Not knowing the first thing about how to be that kind of man, I fell back on the only alternative that came to mind. Forcing them to kneel beneath my iron fist. Two years under Odalon's tutelage was nowhere near long enough to instill me in me the natural nobility I needed. Thus was I left to be tormented by this accursed phantom whenever alone, and play the ruthless ruler other elsewise. In my attempts to mask the fear lurking within, I grew louder, and more ostentatiously contemptuous. Practically every other word out of my mouth was an insult. The old Aunt Jacopo was long gone, and Lord Barnier had crept in to take his place. It was gradual enough that I hardly realized it was happening. But now all I saw in the mirror was the face of a cruel, wretched man. I even came to hate my old self. Think him foolish. What kind of a vapid, nebulous dream was I want to go out into the world? What basis did I have for thinking myself any more significant than any other kid on the streets? And where the hell did I get the idea that having influence meant having freedom? I could barely even take care of myself. Where did I get off on thinking a little power would let me protect the people I cared about? And what about now? What fundamentally did I even want now? What did I have to protect? Nothing. I was too far gone. There was no light to be found no matter how far I marched this path. And only a bottomless abyss waited at my back. I had left myself with nowhere to run to return to. Before I knew it, nearly four years had passed since the revolution. Faith for fortune, I just realized. Hmm. By then, not a soul dared defy my will. I was surrounded by people who supported my every decision. Few of them genuinely agreed with me on everything, obviously. But no one could deny how much growth I had brought about. And so long as I continued to produce results, I would continue to have their outward support. And, and that's the thing, that's the thing. Jacopo, you're not Barnier. He was cruel. You're actually doing well for the city. I mean, yes. The poor... I mean, but... Oh, my God. <sighs> Shit. I don't know. As a trading hub, the city flourished, but the citizens were less than thrilled about the work I was doing. The poorest especially seemed to hold a great deal of en enmity for me. But I was reaching the point where I couldn't manage on the support of the upper crust alone. Simply dumping sacks of coin into the streets wouldn't end poverty, though, and increasing taxes on imported goods would undermine everything I had built up. Lacking an actual solution, all I could do was work on them to make them feel like they were better off than they actually were. Fortunately, it was much easier to pull the wool over the middle and lower classes' eyes than it was the better educated upper class. I started by building public recreational facilities, which citizens had priority access to, and then I turned my eyes toward religion. About a year earlier, as a part of the city's expansion, a bridge was built across the river that served as the city's effective border. A church had still not been established in that new district, so I wanted to build one and gather a following. Conveniently enough, my predecessor had been in the process of building a second manor on the other side of the river, and with a little bit of work, it could easily be repurposed into a church. <gasps> oh! The manor. The mansion. Once people started making use of the church, it would be simple to win their favor by making myself known as a generous patron. The faith was the ultimate blinder for the uneducated, and history showed time and again that religion could be a powerful tool in the right hands. Oh, how true is that today? But the high foreigner and merchant population in the city meant that no one particular, re no one particular religion had managed to take hold. The merchants especially tended to develop their own individual philosophies over the years, with few caring much for higher powers. That was a possible explanation for why the church had never had much sway in this religion region. There was, therefore, a chance the whole thing could just be a colossal waste of money. However, I had recently caught wind of a curious rumor. There was a nun serving at a small church at the far edge of town who people had come to refer to as the Saintess. Marie, come here, Sister Marie! 
Oh, what is it? We picked some flowers for you. Take a look, they're so pretty. Oh, why, thank you. They're beautiful. He fell for it. Huh. Hey now, how many times do I have to tell you it's not nice to trick people? You're too much fun to tease, Sister Marie. But that's hardly an excuse. It's still wrong. I'm your big sister here, so you need to treat me like... Ah, oh, there's a bug on your dress! Oh my god, poor Pauline. <laughs> but, no, no, where is it? Get it off, someone get it off me! Just kidding, there's nothing there. Oh my god. Uh, get back here, you little rascals. So her name's Marie. Not quite what I envisioned of the so-called saintess. She seeks out orphans to take into her care and offers food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, and re rest for the weary. And where exactly do the funds for that come from? She covers it all herself, supposedly. I highly doubt she has that kind of money just sitting around. Uh, look at the building. It's practically falling apart. Uh, wait a second. I get it. She makes use of all the church's resources to fund her charity. That is correct, my lord. Hmm. Is she so fool- really so foolish as to not realize that's unsustainable? The locals are quite fond of her, but the same cannot be said of the priests and other nuns. Her work is causing them great financial stress. I'm not surprised. Uh, shall I summon her? No, don't bother. I've seen more than enough. Yes, my lord. What? You have something to say? No, my lord. I simply find it curious you would take the time to come all the way out here when you have far more important work to attend to. Not that I would ever imply your judgment is as anything other than impeccable, my lord. I just thought this saintess might be someone I knew. Pardon? But I was mistaken. They don't call her the saintess because she does God's work. They just call her that because she's a damned goody two-shoes. So much for words having actual meaning. Christ. Uh, I... I see. Lord Barnier? It's nothing. I'm heading back now. Yes, sir. Now, be polite. Hmm? <gasps> Yukimasa! Good day, Marie. The kids seem to be doing quite well. Oh, you have no idea. So well, in fact, that this little hooligan found himself a whole handful of bugs. And goodness, he's about scared me out of my skin. <laughs> a little mischief is a good thing. Their smiles wouldn't be half as bright as any other orphanage. I'm not so sure about that. In any case, here's what I earned this week. No, 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 I, I keep telling you that's not necessary. But you do accept teeth, you know. Yes, but still. I know it's hardly enough to cover what you need, but please. No, that's not what I mean. It's your money. You should use it for yourself. I have nothing to use at all. You'll put it to much better use than I ever could. I knew the moment Pauline would show up, we would get to see good old Yukimasa again. Hi, how you doing, you... Crazed murderer. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, but try not to work yourself too hard, okay? I promise. Oh, goodness, you really do make a lot in a week. I didn't realize carpentry paid so well. Indeed. I'm fortunate enough to have found good work. Maybe I'll leave the church and take up carpentry myself. Just kidding. You kid. But you would do quite well for yourself. You're strong enough to carry me, at least. And that took every last bit of strength I had. <laughs> uh, who is that man? Even with all the foreigners we get here, I've never seen anyone who looks like that. He is a frequent visitor to this church. 
Although he does not appear to come from the for the charity. Hmm. An Oriental, perhaps? O oriental? My former counsel told me of them once. A vagrant from the Far East who supposedly look much like that man. How curious. He may be able to fool the nun, but I know damn well no carpenter in the world makes that much in a week. There's something fishy about him. And look into that man! Tell me anything you find out about him! Yes, Lord Barnier. Now I'm heading back. Oh, we're getting into that. We're getting into the character introduction. In, in, okay, okay. Oh, boy. In addition to the renovations for the church and gathering intel on the far eastern man, I made sure to keep an eye out for any unusual rumors or happenings outside the city's borders. Of all the reports I received, the one that caught my attention was a word of a witch who lived by a lake. And this lakeside witch supposedly had miraculous powers, allowing her to cure any ailment. And the effect was transmitted through her blood. This wasn't the first time I had heard of the witch. An elderly woman who had prepared and sold medicinal herbs. But I hadn't realized she also traded in miracles. It sounded like a bunch of snake oil to me. But she had allegedly cured a deathly ill young girl, and started to make quite a name for herself. But on top of that, they also said the sound of the witch's first cry had ended a years-long drought in the village where she was born. Now, this doesn't bode well. Why not, my lord? Try using your damn head once in a while, would you? Two competing denominations forming so close together. You don't see how, th how that could lead to all sorts of headaches? The objective is to unify the people under a single banner, to which I then pledge my support and earn their favor. But that all becomes moot if their faith turns toward this witch. The people do love their heroes and miracles, after all. It is quite an attractive proposition, I must say. I'm mocking them, you buffoon. I, I beg your pardon. The chances of it growing into something actually worth worrying about are slim. But better to snuff the flame out before it spreads, and then sit back and hope it burns itself out. Uh, shall I deliver an order for her to cease operation, then? That would be best. Actually, no. I'll deal with this personally. You just keep your mouth shut and do exa exactly as you're ordered. Nothing more, nothing less. Understood? Yes, Lord. To start, summon the man from the church. Oh, boy. A few days later, I was standing face to face with the man in my audience room. He seemed much less personable in person than when I had seen him with the nun. Stone-faced, cold, and faintly smelled of blood. Not that I could actually smell blood, but there was an animalistic air emanating from him. That much I had expected, though. I knew before summoning him that he was anything but a respectable man. I take it you're the oriental man who's been, who's been seen buzzing around at the local church of late. That would be me, yes. And what of it? Who do you think you're talking to, you impudent rat? Show some damn respect! Apologies. I'm not very familiar with local customs or language. Hm. Very well, then. You're fortunate I'm such an understanding man. Now for the reason I called you here. You're the one who killed that cart full of slaves four years ago, aren't you? <clears throat> so you know about that. Ha! I wasn't actually sure it was you, but now I have confirmation. Oh, God. Since then, one slave of fight and origin has remained unaccounted for. I take it that would be you. That's right. You made one hell of a mess out there. Am I here to be punished? Now that depends on how our talk goes. If you think I'm going to go back to being a slave, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> I don't need any more damn slaves, and I certainly don't want you as one. You're obviously not finding any respectable work being an ex-slave, so I take it you're still in the business of getting your hands dirty, are you not? I assume you're playing cat burglar or something, living off whatever you can swipe from the nearest unlucky bastard. Correct. Isn't it comical, then, that you would choose God's sacred house to stretch your legs in, you filthy dog? I absolutely agree. I thought that would get a reaction out of you, but it seems you've got no bite in you today. And never mind, let's get down to business. You're going to help me out with a little something I'm working on. 
help you with what exactly? Something that's going to make me a lot of money. And if you lend a hand, I'll make sure you're well taken care of. Along with the church you're so fond of, and the nun you've taken a liking to. That nun of yours has made quite the name for herself. Out in the city proper, people have started calling her the Saintess. You're right about that. She is. Huh. The commoners love the heroes and saints. Leave that rubbish right up. But saint or not, you can't simply create food from nothing. Her work is causing financial troubles for the church, is it not? It is, yes. If you help me with this, I'm offering you an entirely new church. One where she has complete control to do as she wishes. She'll make it into the biggest church in the city. She'll be able to help even more people, which should surely please her. What would you have me do? Jumping on the first whiff of scraps. You really are a dog, aren't you? I don't like conversations that overstay their welcome. <laughs> Fair enough. Then let's get down to business. Not far from here lives a witch whose blood has the power to cause miracles. Miracle blood? <laughs> Sounds like a sham to me. You never know. They say the sound of her first cry brought rain to the land where she was born, saving the whole village from drought. And they say her blood has the power to cure any disease. Mm. I'll worry about the voracity of the rumors later. Right now, all I want for is for you to capture her and bring her to me. Explain something to me, Lord. You said that if I helped you, the nun would be able to save more people than she does now. So how does capturing this witch accomplish that? I'm glad you know how to listen, dog. We'll be turning the blood into a miracle elixir, which you will then distribute to patrons of the church. In exchange for teeth, of course. Selling it, then. Selling isn't quite the right word, but if that's how you want to think of it, by all means. The commoner's beloved saintess, handing out an all-powerful miracle medicine. They'll lap it up. And in turn, you'll make a fortune. Exactly. Money I can use to support her church. It'll be a boon to the city's economy as well. A single witch's freedom is all it'll cost for everyone here to come out happy. So, what'll it be? Will you help, or will I have to... I'll help. I have no reason not to. Decisive and a good listener. Excellent. Once I've captured the witch, where do I take her? I have a mansion set aside where your nun can run her church. There's an observation tower on the grounds. The witch will be kept locked up there to ensure we have a constant supply of blood. Okay. Where do you want me to get her? You're just chomping at the bit now, aren't you? I thought you'd hesitate at least a little, but I guess it was foolish of me to presume to understand how a killer's mind works. All the resources I put into investigating you and everyone close to you were wasted, it would seem. Do you even have a conscience? Don't l act like you're any different. I assure you, I have a conscience. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't necessary for the growth of the city. No. I mean you're as much a murderer as me. You would never come up with a scheme like this if your hands were clean. Oh. The man's right. You're nothing but a murderer. How deep has the blood seeped into your hands? How many have you killed claiming their lives necessary sacrifices? And how many more will die for your ambition? Silent spirit. That poor, poor witch. Blessed with the power to overperform miracles only to win her to the attention of the villainous lord. It must be done. I don't have to explain myself to you. It's not like the old hag has long to live anyway. What the hell is villainous about having her spend her final days for the greater good of the city? So many lives will be improved at the cost of only one. You keep telling yourself that, boy. But what you're doing is no different than my banquets. You're cut from the same cloth as the man standing before you. And the same cloth as me. Be gone, Phantom. <laughs> Watch your mouth, dog. 
don't you dare insinuate I would ever condescend to your level. We are getting so close to that point. Oh my god, the- oh no, I don't- First time he's shown up with someone else around. <laughs> At least you behaved yourself today. I'm pretty sure you're smarter than most people I deal with. And you won't betray me either. Who knows how much longer he'll live though? Stay. Don't touch it until I say so. Oh, quit pouting at me like that. You're the Lord's dog. Stand tall and proud. Alright, here you are. Drink it up. Looks like it's safe. I swear. So much work just to get to myself a damn drink of water. He got a doggy? Oh my god, he's got a dog. When I heard about the saintess, I thought it might be you. Or someone else. I never did get around to resuming the search after Odalon passed. There's no one around I can trust such a sensitive task. No, it's probably for the best if I never do find you. We can't go back to the way we were before. Not that there's much chance that you're even still alive. If, by some strange chance, you are still alive, what would you think of the man I've become? Several days later than originally planned, the Far Eastern Man finally arrived at the mansion. I had arranged to meet up with him on the uppermost level of the observation tower on the church grounds. Okay. It'd be too much of a dick move for me to end it here. About time. The man appeared before me, a burlap sack slung over his shoulder. I had ordered he use the sack, I'm afraid he might be foolish enough to actually drag the old woman all the way here. There's your witch. He threw the bag to the ground, causing the woman inside to let out a muffled grunt. It didn't sound like an elderly woman's voice, though. This stench. Tell me you didn't harm her, dog. I smell blood. You only instructed me not to kill her. Mistakes were made, limbs were lost. Damn it. I cleaned up all the blood I got on me. No one suspected anything. He's even further gone than I imagined. I should have been clearer in my instructions. Although I suppose it doesn't matter much. She's not going to live long either way. That you were able to immediately recognize it is the smell of blood says quite a bit, Lord. You have killed before, haven't you? Enough yapping. She is alive, yes? Of course. Fighting back a sigh, I tossed my gaze from the man to the bag. I felt slightly sorry for the woman, but the feeling didn't last long. I had seen too many bloodied, mangled bodies, both dead and alive, to be phased by one more. He crouched down to untie the bag. And a young girl came tumbling free. Uh, it, it, it can't be. As soon as I saw her... I knew exactly who the girl was. It had been four years, but no length of time could wipe from my memory those patches on her face. All those breathtaking golden eyes. But... Why? How? What was she doing inside the bag? Why had I ordered her captured? How? How could I have done that? M Morgana? She was pale as death, shaking visibly. Confusion seized me, a cloud of swirling darkness forming before my eyes. The first thought that came to my mind was that he had gotten the wrong person. I had only ordered the, her capture because I thought the witch by the lake an old woman. If I had known she was a young girl, let alone her, I would have never given the command. <laughs> but those thoughts led nowhere. I was simply trying to avoid facing reality. Trying to place the blame on anyone but myself. I couldn't take back what had already been done. I couldn't change it. There she was, 
the girl who had once won my affection, lying in a ball on the cold stone with an arm missing. It didn't matter how we had gotten here, or what I had felt about her. There was no fixing what I had done. She looked up at me, at the source of the muttering above her. Her eyes were opened almost frighteningly wide, and they wandered aimlessly, unfocused to the point I wasn't sure she was seeing anything at all. I felt a tinge of madness in her. Is that you? The words spilled from her lips so softly they barely reached my ears. Hardly a trace of the beautiful singing voice from my memory remained. It was hoarse and raspy, every sound seemingly laced with an unfathomably deep, pitch-black hatred for all existence. Y you you remember me? Would she even be able to recognize me anymore? How could I ever forget? Morgana, she remembered me? The days we spent together? What kind of person I had been? The boy who had refused to give up putting ointment on her face? All our friends? Those horribly unromantic encounters at the graveyard? Her taking shots at me, me taking shots at her? Did she really remember? All the time we had shared? How could I ever forget? All... All the pain... And humiliation you put me through! What? How could I ever forget the blood savage you loved to hold? What? What was she talking about? Haven't had enough, have you? Leaving scars on every inch of my body wasn't enough for you? You haven't had your fill of my blood? I couldn't even begin to process the words I was hearing. They were little more than angry, meaningless shouts crashing into me. What the hell was she saying? Did she think I was someone else? Did she think I was him? That I was Barnier? No, no, Morgana. That wasn't me. I wasn't the man who had caused you so much agony. Look at the girl. You would claim you haven't caused her pain. <laughs> You're the man who bound me, cut me up, called me a witch, and then tried to kill me. I haven't forgotten you even for a moment. No, I was the man who rescued her from him. From him, I wanted to shout, but I couldn't gather the strength to force up a single word. Only gasps of air came from my lips. It was like I had been robbed of my voice. I don't care how much my father preaches forgiveness. That's the one thing you'll never get from me. I despise you with all my soul. I revile you with every fiber of my being. For every scar you gave me, I give you a lifetime of hatred. N no, Morgana! When I finally managed to produce a sound, it was barely more audible than a whisper. In a frenzy, I made to reach out for her, but I noticed the pair of narrow eyes glaring at me. I was not aware you knew the witch lord. Huh? Know her? I just... I don't just know her! She's Morgana! She's the girl I... This man, the lord, he destroyed me mind and body. <laughs> She's not wrong. That was another man. You have become that man to her. I am not Barnier. Do you hear yourself, boy? You're the rightful heir to the Barnier name, are you not? That's what you said when you stole the throne from me. This man ruined my life. How will you respond, boy? Will you say it wasn't you? Can you say it wasn't you? How will you convince her? She's clearly not in her right mind. Would she even understand it if you revealed the truth? Can you do that, knowing it won't make it through to her? Will you tell her you're nothing more than a slum rat, a usurper, that you deceived your way into power? That everything you built up over these years was all a lie? That you killed your former friends for nothing? That Odalon died for nothing. That you endured betrayal after betrayal for nothing. Do you have the spine to say it, boy? All the sacrifices you made, 
all the pain you suffer to make it here could all come crumbling down the moment you do. What will it be, false lord? Is the girl worth it? Is sharing the truth with this half-dead girl on the brink of madness worth losing everything you worked so hard to accomplish? Make your choice. What's the matter, Lord? Yes, I know her. Or I knew her years ago. I see. What do you want to do then, Lord? You look sick. What do I want to do? Obviously. I... on Earth... This doesn't change anything. We lock the witch up and proceed as planned. Did I make this choice? Congratulations, boy! Thus concludes your inheritance of the name Lord Barnier. Jesus Christ. Four years earlier. Okay, that's a good place to end it. Kind of a dick move, but that seems like the really that seems like the best place I could probably end it before we go back into uh, endless stasis of not being able to record this. Okay. It seems like that we can kind of put an end, or rather, is the end of Jacopo's version of events. Judging by the color of that, that's Morgana's color, which mean, makes me think that, yes, this is going to be now Morgana's turn to tell her story. That was... No matter how many times we, I get to that point. Which I... Well, not really getting to that point, but knowing what's going to happen... Because of, you know, the, the first story, I know what happens. No matter... It still gets me. It really does. But now we actually got to see the... The full extent of the inner tor turmoil that Jacopo had been suffering this whole time. And I'm glad the story went there. It didn't hold back. It was very gritty. It showed this... It teached... It... it it showed respect in terms of the story. It did not sugarcoat anything. Which just makes me like, which makes me respect the people who made this story, who made this novel. It makes me respect them even more. And I'm glad. But anyway, oh my god, why does that sound like that's the last episode? Hell no! Um... You know, if I could, I would gladly do this, like, a lot. A lot more. Where I'm just recording non-stop and I get to, I don't know, experience these stories even more. I want to, but I can't. So that's where I'm going to end it. If you guys like this, if you guys enjoyed this week of Fate of Morgana and Ghost Trick, be sure to let me know. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.